Welcome to chapter one, section one. Uh, this is called e-commerce 101, and this is where I just want to kind of uh, explain e-commerce and give a very brief history of it and where it's going today and how it's affected us. It's obviously had a huge impact on the way that we shop, not just in America, but all over the world. Um, people like the idea of shopping in their pajamas at midnight for a coffee maker or a vacuum. Um, it's just extremely convenient um, and you don't have to deal with the hassle of going into a store and, and waiting in lines. So it, people generally um, are very open to the idea of shopping online. Um, some people are still s skeptical uh, even to this day about security but um, with all the different types of security measures and SSL certificates, um, it's fair to say that it's it's pretty it's pretty safe to shop online. Um, unless you see some red flags, you should always see a, th that it says HTTPS to make sure that it's a secure connection. So um, unless it's a shady website, uh, it's 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 actually very safe to shop online. So what is e-commerce? By definition, it's the transaction or the facilitation of business over the internet. Um, and there's many different types of e-commerce, which I'll go over in this video. Um, you usually think online. You usually think of an online shopping cart when you think of e-commerce. But there's a couple different um, models of e-commerce. So it's short for electric commerce. Um, any form of business over the internet could be considered e-commerce as I pretty much just said. So I'll go over a very brief history of e-commerce in the internet. Uh, in 1979 uh, online shopping was created by Michael Aldrich. Now this wasn't uh, it wasn't released to the public or anything like that but the the base functionality of online shopping was first established in 1979. Uh, it wasn't until, until 1992 to 94 when the internet was first released to the public um, along with Netscape Navigator. I don't know if you guys remember that. Um, one of the first browsers or the first browser um, that people could actually use in their homes. Um, and at that time different online shops started popping up uh, Books.com was one of them. Um, I'm not sure, but I think it was the actually the first big e-commerce site, um, which is, did pretty well and eventually got sold to Barnes and Noble. So if you go to Books.com today, I believe you get redirected to Barnes and Noble. So around this time, um, between '94 and '96, uh, there was just a ton of new .com. Uh, businesses, which is basically just an internet business. Um, Amazon, which is the the e-commerce um, mecca of the internet, was created and released in 1996. Um, in 1997, Dell was w was supposedly the first to make a million in online sales. They made uh, one million dollars in online sales. Uh, 97 to 2000 is considered the dot-com bubble uh, and I don't know if you've ever heard of that but what happened was um, dot-coms which are just basically internet businesses those companies were seeing their stock prices shoot up through the roof uh, just by adding an E to the on the front of their domain um, and this this made for an environment where investors were overlooking uh, traditional metrics and just um, you know skipping vital parts of of investing, and they had so much of a confidence in new technology technology advancements that um, things just went south and and too many internet companies got too much credit for when they shouldn't have and um, it ended up in just a mess. Uh, and it's called the dot-com collapse. Um, I'm not a genius on the subject, I'm just telling you what I know from it. Um, something you might want to look up. But eventually, around 2002, um, 
things started getting a little better, uh, and there were a lot there were a lot of companies that just got buried in the in the dot com collapse. Pets dot com was a huge name back then, and they just didn't survive. Um, there were a few that did make it through Amazon um, and Cisco, and there's there's a, a few others that that made it through. Um, even though they were down, they were down, but they weren't out. Amazon stock went from $107 a share to $7 a share. Um, but in 2003, Amazon actually made uh, their first profit um, in 2003. And ever since then, um, they've got bigger. Other, other online shops have got bigger. So what can you buy and sell online? Uh, the short answer is everything, but there's a few categories that everything can fit into, or mostly everything. And first we have physical goods, which is obvious um, clothes, washing machine, um, furniture, anything physical, and that's the most common type of product that, that's purchased online. Then you have digital goods, uh, iTunes. Any kind of music, documents, ebooks, um, any kind of downloadable products would be considered digital goods. And some platforms, such as PrestaShop, uh, will have the ability to sell digital products. Uh, subscriptions you'll see a lot of subscription websites where you would pay a certain fee and then you'd get access to certain pages on the website. Uh, with premium content that that a normal visitor wouldn't be able to have access to and then we have services which could be anything uh, web design um, landscaping uh, anything any kind of company could have a e-commerce page where they, the person could pay then and there online and then the company would go and, and do the service so Types of e-commerce, um, online shopping is definitely the most popular. That's usually what you think of. Um, an online shopping website um, resembles a, a physical retail store. Uh, you can search products by categories and other options. Um, they can pick and choose what they want to buy and put them and remove them from the cart the online shopping cart um, and a lot of these online shops will have promotion codes or gift cards or things that you'd see in, in a real retail shop so some examples of online shopping is amazon.com obviously uh, newegg.com which sells digital products uh, computers and stereos and that kind of stuff and then we have target.com uh, walmart.com all those sites they're all online shopping websites online auctions of course what comes to mind when you say online auction is ebay ebay is huge has, has always been the the biggest uh, name in, in online auctions you also have sites like ubid.com uh, govsales.com is another one and these sites run pretty much like a physical auction would. Another kind of auction online, which is relatively new, is penny auctions. Um, I'm sure you've seen sites like Quibids or Penny Grab, and they're basically a pay-to-play. You need to buy. You can buy certain a certain amount of bids that you can use on the site. Um, a lot of people, including myself, are pretty skeptical on these on these sites. A lot of them kind of seem a little shady, um, but that's really just my opinion. Um, I've never really used one, so I can't say too much about it. So uh, that's all I'll say about penny auctions. Uh, internet banking, everyone knows what that is. TDBank.com, Bank of America, all offer online banking. Uh, you can make transactions, you can deposit, you can transfer money from one account to another. Um, it's extremely convenient and something that I use um, pretty much daily. Uh, let's see, online ticketing. Uh, that's, you know, when's the last time that 
uh, you purchase tickets to anything offline you know um, from airfare t air airline tickets to um, tickets for plays or sporting events um, those are kind of in their own e-commerce um, functionality type of functionality uh, and then we have website subscriptions which I talked about a few minutes ago uh, someone will go on the site and pay a fee and they could be subscribing to actual website content or they could be subscribing to say a magazine or a newsletter um, where they would be billed they'd have recurring billing maybe once a month or uh, maybe every couple months um, something like that alright so every form of e-commerce can be put into one of four models one or more of four models um, we have business to business or B2B which is um, when, a, when a business is selling a product to another business so both the buyer and the seller are a business and this usually consists of manufacturers traders retailers um, stuff like that business to consumer or B2C this is the most popular type of e-commerce model uh, Amazon Walmart any of the big department stores um, the business is selling to the consumer and next we have consumer to consumer um, or C2C and what this is is usually a classified type of website where a consumer or a regular person can go on and purchase something from another c consumer someone that's not a business so um, there's that and then there's consumer to business which is relatively new and sometimes not included when talking about these models um, an example of consumer to business would be say a freelance website like odesk.com or, or elance uh, a consumer would go on and post the specifications that they need for let's say a new website and then the business would have an account on that site and they'd apply to to the job um, or the project and that would be an example of consumer to business alright so who should use e-commerce um, ultimately uh, anyone who sells anything can take advantage of e-commerce if they do it in the right way. Uh, I can't come up with a huge reason why uh, setting up an online shop would be a bad idea for anyone. Um, what would be a bad idea is if someone uh, was, will, was putting thousands of dollars into it uh, to have a, a developer create a proprietary platform just for them. Um, you know when, when they don't even have any kind of web presence already uh, that's a bad idea but to be able to use some kind of pre-made platform like we are here uh, where you can do it at very low cost and and even free if you if you're someone who's tech savvy um, you can most likely build a, a Presta shop or or a Magento website for next to nothing maybe just hosting costs or, or plug-in and add-on fees or something like that but uh, generally you can get these really really cheap so I don't see a problem with anybody doing that um, e-commerce brings your products and your business to the world uh, if, if you have a small little shop that builds knickknacks or whatever in some small town uh, e-commerce allows you to to go beyond that town line uh, to, to expose your product to thousands and, and even millions of other people um, so it can be very powerful um, there are many solutions that you could use to create an online store for a very low price or even free depending on the features you need and these open source shopping cart platforms have tons of features um, most likely have more features than you would need so um, short answer uh, a anyone can use e-commerce as long as they they take the right approach M commerce M commerce is relatively new uh, it stands for mobile commerce uh, mobile internet is huge and it will only be getting bigger in the future um, people are shopping online on their phone a lot more 
um, you know, just maybe sitting in a waiting room, um, and they, they think of something they need, and they'll just quickly grab their smartphone and order it. So when you build a any, not just an e-commerce website, but any kind of site, you should always take into consideration mobile users. Uh, and you can do that in a few different ways. Uh, you can use a responsive type of template or design, and I know we can get uh, some some responsive templates from PrestaShop or Magento or whatever platform you're using. Uh, chances are you'll be able to find a responsive template, and what that does is it has a, a, a layout for each screen size. So you'd have a, a one layout for a desktop, one layout for a tablet and one layout for a, a smartphone and it would look great on all, all three devices. Um, that's the easiest way to do it. You could also set up a dedicated mobile site which you know is, in terms of performance might be a little better but in terms of management would be horrible because you're basically maintaining two different sites. And another option businesses have is to create an iPhone or an Android app um, which would be available on the App Store or the, or the Play Store but that can get very very expensive okay so this is the last slide in this section and this is just a, a, an overview of the anatomy of an online store definitely not all the pro all the features but some of the the vital ones product and categories catalog um, of course, you need a catalog for users to be able to browse through um, and, and find the products they want. Product search works very well because it gives the user, it enables them to just put in exactly what they're looking for. Um, and if you have a good search functionality on your website, uh, it can really, can really be great for your customers. Shipping methods and payment methods. Um, are definitely needed for an online shop. Uh, you need some kind of shipping so you can get the product to them. Unless, of course, you're only selling downloadable products. Um, but payment, obviously you need to take payment, which we'll talk about in either the next slide or the one after that. <coughs> Excuse me. Check out your, your customers need a way to, to get all the products they want and then pay for them. Check them out. Uh, client accounts is a good thing to have so your your um, customers can just log in and see their order uh, which orders were made and, and when they were sent out and all that kind of stuff translation and multi-currency uh, not critical but is real good to have in case someone comes to your site where uh, English isn't their first language or or if they're in another country or whatever uh, Analytics and reporting is great to have for you, for the webmaster, just so you can see um, your income or uh, just all kinds of things. You can have reports of what part of the world your customers are coming from. Um, and most open source platforms have some kind of reporting tool. And I also have latest popular and featured products. Uh, this is really good to put these on maybe your home page or your landing page so that the, the person can see um, all your new products as well as what's the most popular uh, and you, you can also feature certain products. Alright, so that's it for this tutorial. Um, I hope you learned something from it. Uh, next we'll be going through choices for platforms to use. Uh, and we'll also be talking about payment. So I will see you in the next video.